introduce you to our sofa guest today. And if you go to the Southwell Picture Palace, you will see the back of my sofa guest today. Tom Horton's with us. And uh, he rises from the ground playing the organ in the interval that is forced into the middle of any film in uh, the Southwell Picture Palace. So Tom is Suffolk born and bred. Uh, although I have to say, did I notice that your day job involves you going to Great Yarmouth? I yes, it right. does. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a, I work a couple of days a week with Andon's Music Centre, um, which is one of the UK's uh, largest electronic organ retailers. So work with them, do a lot of teaching as well. Um, I must apologise because if you see me from the back, you're looking at the front now. I'm really sorry. <laughs> all, all I can say is that I'm glad. I, I just of an era where Monty Python had the naked person yes. right, playing the... Yes, so, with, the, with the bow tie. With the bow tie. And, yes, that, that's, 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 a, that's a vein of my life, unfortunately. <laughs> I was going through Halesworth this morning and uh, bumped into a, a, a friend of mine and uh, this uh, he introduced me to this lady. He said, oh, have you ever been to the South Hold Cinema? And, and she goes, yes, I've been there. And he said, oh, Tom plays the organ there. He's one of the organists. And so she goes, oh, I don't recognise you. So I turn around. She goes, oh, yes. I recognise your back. <laughs> From the back, yes. <laughs> so, so, I mean, I assume that because you, you're underground, so you must be able to sneak in underground just in time to rise upon the, on the organ. Well, yes, I'm, I'm sure some of your um, listeners might have seen this uh, film that uh, Paul Heine and I put together recently all about the organ, um, which was a, a little documentary about the cinema. And uh, when they actually built the cinema back in 2002, they um, dug a massive tunnel. Um, from the front kiosk, which goes underneath the um, the audience, so you have to go down this this step ladder into the depths of the earth. It's like the Great Escape. I mean, literally, <laughs> you have to crouch down, and you have to be really quiet because you kind of you have to get up this staircase down down there, right the way to the organ, climb in the case, shut the door, turn the thing on, and you have to do all this while the film's going on. So you have to be really quiet. Well, and so it's right if it's a noisy film, but if it's a quiet love story, or yes, something. if someone's going. So what do you think? I don't know, what do you think? You're going bash, bash, bash. <laughs> you have to be really quiet. But if they're playing, you know, like a massive action movie thing, it's uh, but right. it's great it's great fun there and the, the audiences like to hear the organ. Because obviously you don't you don't hear organs in cinemas anymore. That was something that you would have heard in the nineteen twenties and thirties. Um, um and of course a lot of the generations who used to go to the cinema in those days, people like my grandparents now are either passed on or whatever. So it's it's nice to sort of recreate that 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 old fashioned going out for the evening to a to a cinema. And 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 the organ itself is and we'll talk about the film in a minute. So is the organ itself pretty rare? I mean is it unusual or No no it's it's uh, it's a digital instrument. It it's basically runs off a computer. The problem with the cinema is at Southport um everything's in miniature because you're it's in a, you, really it's tiny. You've got a miniature circle yeah. a miniature I mean yeah. you've got claustrophobia don't go. Um but it's it's got a, an upper circle it's got a royal box. Um uh, Michael Palin uh, came and, and opened the place many years ago, but the uh, the organ itself is uh, runs off a computer. It has this program that kind of produces these Wurlitzer of style sound. So it was because the box that the organ sits in is basically a meter square, <laughs> and so you, we can only have certain sized organists <laughs> to go and play it because they if they're too tall they can't. <laughs> their head gets uh, bashed into the uh, into the trap doors as the organ goes up and down. But it's uh, um, th they'd have a real pipe organ there if they had the room, but there's just no room for pipes. But it, it, it makes the right sound, and obviously it's the experience, which is the important thing. So, so tell me about the film, because that's when we chatted before, mm. wasn't it? Uh, you, you and Paul Heine teamed up, so how did Yeah, well, well I met, I've, I've known Paul as an acquaintance um, through Leiston Film Theatre, because him and his good wife Libby come and see the uh, the panto that I play music for each year. And um, he, he emailed me and said, you know, just been to Southall Cinema, um, he said, you know, this this organ the thing and you coming up and down and everything really fascinates me so I explained a bit about you know like I say theatre organs back in the 20s and 30s and, and people forget that in the old days there were five to six hundred UK cinemas that had an organ in and in the 1920s the organ was designed not to sound like a church organ it was basically like a, an orchestral instrument so people remember the names Wurlitzer, Compton, all these makes and the organist's job was to accompany the silent film as we call them. So you play and and, and that's a real skill in itself yeah, isn't absolutely, it? Because you played yeah. the tunes that would go with slow, yeah, you'd, fast, you'd improvise horror, and whatever, all, that, yeah. all that business and the small cinemas had a piano, the the big cinemas so if you came here to Ipswich a big cinema would have had either for example the Ritz Ipswich they had a Wurlitzer in um, or they would have had their own orchestra and the conductor's job was to take the score that came round with the film and actually conduct and try and keep it in time. Some of these films, you know, things like the, the big Chaplin films, uh, you know, uh, Rudolph Valentino, they went on for sometimes at two hours. And um, and so the idea of the cinema organ was it was basically a one-person orchestra organ. And all the sounds were made with organ pipes, but they had percussion instruments, they had sound effects to help what was going on on the thing. So so Paul said, he said, that's a almost a, an unseen thing nowadays if you go to an Odeon cinema, you just 
buy your popcorn, go in and go home. That's basically it. But the thing of going to the cinema, it was a night out. You saw the news, you had interval entertainment, and the organ was the was the main highlight for everybody. So he, he thought it was a nice little documentary just to show what we do at the cinema. And it's uh, it's on YouTube and people can see it if they wish. Excellent. So, ha- so have a look for that as well. Definitely. Uh, and tell me, because uh, you mentioned their cinema organs, and uh, are they quite unusual now? I mean, I know Southwold is unusual in every mm. respect pretty yeah. much, but are there other cinemas that have organs like There's that? There's not many organs that have cinema organs in them. The, probably the most famous one is the Odeon Leicester Square where they have the, the Royal Premiers and they've, they've got this wonderful... Oh, do they have one there? Yeah. They've got a five keyboard one, <gasps> um, which is the one of only two... Have you played it? No, I've seen it, never played it. There were, there were two five manual Comptons built um, for cinemas. One actually went in Broadcasting House in London and that was destroyed in an air raid but the, the almost identical twin of it was the one that's in the Odeon and that's still still there. Um, and there's a few in museums as well. Obviously people probably know the one at Thursford where they have the Christmas shows and um, on my way here, I've just come from seeing my uh, friend Jonathan Ling at the Grange Collection at Palgrave. Is that what was Cotton? Was Cotton Music okay, Museum, where, yeah. I, where I was one of the organists. And so Jonathan's moving the collection to his new custom-built place. Okay. And um, on the way here, he's, he's just acquired a, a, another Wurlitzer for his collection, um, which is being installed as we speak. So this year, when he opens in May, because it's open the first Sunday of every month, open to the public, and they, they get to see all these self-playing mechanical instruments. And it goes right through from May till December... And at the end of the tour, we have either myself or one of the other organists, we do a little demonstration concert. So this year, the crowds who come will see this uh, 1937 Wurlitzer. It's all got its gold markings on and cream wow. and three keyboards. So that, that should be good fun. So. And is Wurlitzer the, the mate? I mean, is Compton a mate? So yeah, explain, Com- explain the difference. Well, Wurlitzer, to the man in the street, they're all Wurlitzers. Um, yeah. Wurlitzer is, is, a, is the American brand. Uh, they were built in, um, in America. Um, they, by far, built the greatest number of theatre organs. Um, the idea of the cinema organ is, is a British invention. It was an English guy who invented this um, this redesign of the church pipe organ, um, increasing the wind pressures. Um, and basically what he did, he disconnected the, the console, which is the bit with the keyboards and the stops, and he uh, it was a guy called Robert Hope Jones, and he was a telephone engineer. It was in the late 1800s, and he basically adapted the telephone exchange system with all the telephone wires to work as a an electric brain. So when you push the key down on the console, it goes to this relay stack, and then that sends another electrical signal to... Um, a little solenoid magnet which is sitting under one of the pipes and the, the, the magnet pulls the flap down and the air goes into the pipe and yeah. makes a sound. So it's, um, it's, uh, that's where it comes from. But Compton um, was, a, was a British organ company. They were based in London. Um, and in, in uh, Norfolk, we had a, there's a very famous organ company that's no longer called Hill and Norman and Beard, which they did Norwich Cathedral, various other places. And they had a brand of organ called Christie. Um, in fact, Robert Hope Jones used to work for them um, in the early 1900s. So it's, it's very much a, an English design. Um, and there's a few other lesser-known brands. But, but most people, if, they, if they've if been to Blackpool Tower, they would have they seen have the word. The, the word, the word, the word so, so to the man in the street, they're all word. Says, but each one's got its own sound. They're all different. And, well, I guess it's like yeah. every organ, church organs, a lot. They've all got Absolutely. their own character. They've got, they, as, as, well? as all musical instruments do. Yeah, very much so. So, because we were talking silent movies and mm-hmm. how that, that's what the, the cinema organ was for and you're doing a silent film event a Buster Keaton event coming up at yeah, the Cup absolutely. so is that the whole idea, are you going to play for it? We are, yes, it's going to be on the piano so I'm going to be at the New Cut Art Centre on the 29th of February um, which is not a mistake, there is a 29th of February this year. I know, I know, it's so much happening Yeah, and it's um, it's at the New Cut Art Centre, as I say, in Hales with my hometown and we um, we do one or two a, a year there and we get a lovely crowd come so we have a grand piano and we play um, for um, a short second feature and the main film this year is the general, which is Buster Keaton's silent um, civil war epic, which has got um, battles in a big train, and it's a, it's a fantastic thing. So uh, more details on that can be found on the on the New Cut website. So, so, so do you practice before? Do you, I mean, if I haven't seen the film, I try and watch it. I had a hilarious one many years ago, funny enough, at Southwold Cinema, where we'd agreed to play one film, and I came up, and it was a completely different film on the DVD. <laughs> so I was like, oh, thanks. So, um, but it's great because it, it's you 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 can make it different every time. You can have a few stock ideas. That's good. Your do you head, have your but, own stock? Yeah, sheet, so romance. But, and- yeah. And a bit but of chase, chase and, and yeah, that yeah, and some yeah. dum 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 yeah, for the for the yeah. evil bit. But it's uh, it's it, it's essentially composing on the fly. 
um, and that's what it is. So you can you can come up with different ideas, and if the guy slips on a banana peel, you've got because it's not just playing it; you've got to time it right. Because if you don't time it right, the gag isn't put over from the screen. So you watch it and play. You you, you, you literally have well to watch and play at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Which is why the the thing of the organists and the pianists they couldn't read the scores. So that's where this kind of extemporisation thing came that from. Sounds amazing. It's so that's, fun. It so that's uh, the 29th of February, Buster Keaton. So if you want to go along and uh, and watch the film and listen to the music and, and watch your back again, really, I uh, guess. The side, it? actually. Oh, you get to see, you get you get to see, see the, the right-hand side, yes. Yeah, so yeah. of, <laughs> of Tom Horton. Then uh, feel free, book yourself in, give the uh, cut at Halesworth a ring. Look, we've got to do, before before we get to the travel mm. news, so we, we've got three confessions. I was a bit concerned about this yeah. but, uh, yes. one of them is true uh, which we will hang on to until a bit later on do you want to read the three I will these are, so these... this is like would I lie to you I've, I've nicked it off telly really, that's fine basically. we won't tell anyone that's fine it's it's, fine. there's no such thing as a new idea they say just good ideas <laughs> absolutely so here we go three confessions see if you can guess which one's okay, right okay here we go these are the three this is number one I have been married twice but to the same woman number two I halted a concert halfway through to propose to my now wife. And number three, I've played the organ for numerous weddings, including my own. <laughs> have you got any ideas which that could be? Not a you've... clue, I really haven't. No. <laughs> I know you know. <laughs> if you want to give us a ring, text us and let us know which one you think it is, then feel free. But listen on and we'll give you the answer in about half an hour's time. On the Sofa with Leslie Dolphin on BBC Radio Suffolk. Tom Horton. Organist extraordinaire is uh, is our guest. Uh, he has his own U- you have a YouTube channel as well, don't you? Know? I do. Yes. That's not bad. How long have you had that? About two years. And is it is it to feature your music to teach? How does it work? It's it's a mix of things. It's um, we've got um, uh, piano tutorials, um, organ lessons, performance things. The the problem with um, with organ, especially electronic organ and keyboard stuff, there's not that many teachers of it around. So um, I do a lot of teaching from home, but geographically, there's only so far that people can come. So I thought it was a nice idea to put some lessons on how to play theatre organ style keyboard. You know, popular classics on the piano, and it's it's really nice. People comment, say, "Oh, thanks so much." And I live in America, and and um, wow. I, I've, I've struggled with that third bar of the Joplin, and now I can play it. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's 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 a bit of fun, which is nice. So uh, yeah. technology is amazing <coughs> it these certainly days, is. isn't it? As well, and I guess technology, as you say, so you can play the old uh, proper pipe organs in a church, but you could play your keyboard, and that's technology spanning a whole area, isn't oh, it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, especially with um, you know some of the electronic organs that I play, like the Lowry's and things, and the the they're, they're literally virtual orchestras. So um, uh, you can be a symphony orchestra one minute, a uh, a rock band the next you can recreate the sound of virtually anything all from one instrument so it's uh, it's uh, it's a lot of fun and you know when you talk to people you, you they say oh no what do you do oh, i'm an organist and oh, it's, it's a nice conversation starter um but uh, yeah the, the the modern digital organs are just just amazing what they do they really are so how did how did you get into it then it's often a very um, big ask question the originally my my grandparents got me into playing the organ they were um um amateur organists they played the organ at home one day got uh, a new organ funny enough from Allen's uh, where I work part time in Yarmouth and I was about nine or ten and I said oh, that looks really fun and and they said uh, I said can I have a go on it and uh, they my grandmother said well yeah, you can but she said you've got to learn do it properly so into my greedy mitts was thrust how to play the organ book one um, went back home got this basic keyboard out learned the few few basic notes, you know, middle C and so on, a few chords, went back round half an hour later, showed I'd done these two chords, could play like, the first literally song. Literally half an hour later? A- and, yeah, and uh, and um, she goes, oh, all right. And then she taught me for about a year. Then after that, I went to a, a proper organ teacher and did my exams and diplomas and things. So, so yeah, so it, it was kind of, that's literally how it began. And wow. um, I've always been lucky to basically my career is my is my hobby so did you did you know that that's what you wanted to do you didn't question it i I always wanted to do something in music the question was always what Um, because when you went to school and you uh, you probably remember you went went and saw the careers officer didn't you and they tap into the you know you you can get a job at a church (laughs) and of course that's what everybody thinks an organist does and then of course a lot of organists do play in churches but that's only one one facet of it um so so i've been very lucky that um, i say working with alan's uh working places at the cinema, the pantomimes, doing lots of teaching. Um, I've always been very lucky to 
have the work um, and um, and it's been nice that it keeps me fairly local as well which is obviously as important now having a family and everything so uh, yeah so it's it, it's great because each day there's something new um, which is which is really good fun well I, you've but you've built a niche for yourself haven't you in a mm. way because you did a level at school is that right yeah did a levels uh, did a little music um, I, it was a toss-up whether i went to university or not and i was sort of warming and i thought well if I do a degree, the only thing I would probably use the degree for is to go into the classroom, which is something I didn't want to do. So, so left left um, eighteen, and started up, and uh, here we are. <laughs> so, 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 did you start working in the shop as well? In this, uh, in yeah, I, I, I did a couple of started a couple of days with Alan, so I've been which with them. Is for, quite a good sort of uh, yeah, absolutely. Bread and it's job, been isn't very, it? it's been very, very lucky to do a couple of days with them. I've been there nearly twenty years now. Um, do two or three days teaching at home, and then the week is peppered with lots of things like concerts and different events and things and of course um, one highlight of the year is January when I, when I do a pantomimes one of which at Leiston Film Theatre. Yeah and, so. and you you do more than you don't just play the music you help arrange the music because yeah. you compose don't you and all sorts. Yeah all that kind of stuff and uh, yeah the, the Wayne, Wayne Burns I know a lot of people know Wayne as the um, the director of the panto manager of the film theatre so he's, he's built me a lovely pit under the stage so they shove me in there lock the door and <laughs> they let me out at the end of the following week but it's uh, it's it's, it's it's, it's nice. It's it's really good fun. And I guess it's quite creative, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, because yeah, you 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 get you'll read the script and you'll think, oh, we could put a, a little tinkle in there or a little run and and uh, I, I basically treat the pantomimes a bit like a silent film because obviously it, it, again that's what, what what you know what a musical was. It was you know vaudeville kind of stuff with live music. So it's um it's all these things you can turn your hand to, but it's uh, it's uh, it's a lot of fun in the process. And and what about playing? Because I, I know you've played to weddings and there is a huge difference, isn't there, between church organs? then and the ones that you're talking about so oh, yeah. so is that just you've just taught yourself as you've gone along how, how is all of that work well the thing the thing with playing a church organ is you, you a lot of church organists basically have a, a a bread and butter job of playing hymns you know the da 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 of the wedding the wedding marches and they play for funerals so that they tend to get sort of not not boxed in but that's the one style that they play just as a, a classical opera singer tends to specialize in opera so um so the repertoire that you perhaps play in a classical organ concert you stick to stick to bach buxter hude and all the, the big works um but then when you play a cinema organ or electronic organ you can do the whole span of the popular spectrum so we can do everything from 60s music we can do adele we can i do mean you're Disney. quite flexible though yourself yeah you you have to sort of be into a lot of different styles of music especially with teaching because of course i teach a lot of youngsters and of course they want to play Billy Eilish, uh, Eilish, sorry, as I call her. <laughs> they want to play Adele. They want to play Ed Sheeran. And um, whereas the retired learners want to play Beatles and you know some of the you know fifties music and stuff. So, uh, but, but what about the fact? So the pipe organs in the churches—they've all got their own little characters, haven't yeah. they? So you've learnt to master that side of it yeah. and to play the grand. I mean, which have you played some really grand organs? Not a huge amount. No. I mean, I, a lot of the um, things I've known in churches has been mostly um, sort of local. local things but um, there are some of the big town organs we've done weddings on um, I did a nice concert last year in uh, Leyston where they've got a lovely um, uh, church organ in the church then we did a little concert on there which uh, went down very well so um, yeah so it, it's nice to go and play all these all these different instruments and as I say each one is is different every time so it's uh, it's it's, uh, it's it's good fun and how about and how do you play an organ that can play different musical instruments that's a skill in itself isn't it no it, developing that, that side of the, the, yeah, the thing of playing the organ is you're not just... The, the thing of playing the piano is I, I love playing the piano. I mean, it, 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 it's always a second instrument to me because it, you, you put up the music, you put up the Chopin, whatever, and you, you play it. And yes, you can try and play it differently. The piano will sound different from one person to the next. But, but the piano is, is a linear instrument. It's, it's what it is. Whereas when you go and play a pipe organ, a theatre pipe organ, a, an electronic organ or whatever, you have to become an arranger. So you have all these tone colours. There's like an artist palette at your disposal. So you, But then, then, of course, you, you may not have an organ copy. Um, a lot of music is written for the piano or keyboard. So then you have to sort of think, well, how am I going to arrange it? What am I going to do here? So um, it's, a, it's a wonderful creative process. Process and and no no two organists do it the same way. That's the beauty. Well, I think that's why so many people do get hooked playing whatever type of organ because suddenly because a lot of people come to the organ for the piano, and suddenly it's like saying, okay, 
here's your here's your artist panel. It's just like giving an artist colours for the first time. It's it's quite remarkable. Yeah. So, um, but uh, yeah, but and, and when you play to people who are not not musical, not into organs, you find that once you've got them listening to it, they they get really interested and they actually get oh they, they go away just thinking oh didn't know an organ could do that and you, yeah. every time there's a few people you just change their opinion of, of what an organist uh, perhaps does and and uh, you've played uh, you have played other musical instruments haven't you in your time a uh, not, not uh, mostly keyboard I, okay. I did a bit of saxophone at school my, my a-level teacher said well if you want to understand how band scores work go and see the saxophone because yeah, you need to write your music as well don't yeah you? yeah so if, read music. yeah because when you're writing for different instruments some instruments are what they call transposing so you have to write their music in a different key to what the piano's in so all that stuff you learn in the, the theoretical side and um, I play a little bit of ukulele that's quite nice but uh, mostly stick to what I know which is organ and piano and keyboard and it's taken you uh, around the country but out of the country yeah I've, I've been to America quite a few times to play um, for for Lowry over there went to the Lowry organ festivals over there for several years um, which is where I met my wife um, who might be listening in is she is she her, her name's Jennifer okay Hello, Jennifer. Hello, Jennifer. Love you. Um, and, um, she she used to work for Lowry in Chicago, and uh, they they have these. Um, um, they're a bit like, um, I suppose, any sort of. Um, hobby world you, you get steam enthusiasts you have a steam rally so with organ enthusiasts we have organ conferences organ festivals and um, sometimes they're led by a manufacturer so jennifer's from from chicago and uh, she used to work in marketing with Lowry. and we actually met at one of these organ events i was the the guest artist from the uk we did some teaching workshops and uh, um yeah so 10 years this year we've been married so excellent uh, yeah. so she obviously marketed very well at that she, point she, apparently apparently it was the accent and uh, now she's <laughs> Just like meh, nah, and you dragged her, her back, dragged her back here. In yeah, the end, yeah. Back so to yeah, Suffolk. yeah. She she was quite shocked when she turned up and found everything closed at nine o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're. I was going to say we forget that, don't we? Yeah. That we th- we still think that we're we're quite uh, forward thinking mm. so until we until we get to the states. Just to, just read through your confessions again, that, and as we're talking marriage, because they sort of relate to your three confessions. One of these is true, and then we'll get we'll play a bit of music uh, okay. that you've sent me as well. I'll read, the, read these out once again for yeah, everyone listening. Okay. So one of these is right. See if you can guess. All right. Number one, I've been married twice, but to the same woman. Number two, I halted a concert halfway through to propose to my now wife. And number three. I've played the organ for numerous weddings, including my own. <laughs> so, any ideas? We'll put you out of your misery in a, in a minute or two. Tell me about uh, the bit of music we're going to play because you sent me. This is Wipeout. So yeah, absolutely. So what this... have you played it on? Or... Okay, this is on a... you've got CDs. People can buy. Yeah, them, absolutely. You? So, if anybody wants to um, um, buy a Christmas present for someone they don't like, um, they can Ooh. they can head to my website tomhorton.co.uk where they can find out about music books and everything I do. But there's uh, CD albums on there. Some on pipe organs. Uh, this is on a Lowry, uh, which is a, a Lowry virtual orchestra, and this is uh, by the Safari. Is very popular number called Wipeout.
Pants at Wipeout, as played by my sofa guest today. Uh, and uh, that's fantastic. And we were just talking about how you get the different musical instruments, how you set them all mm. up on the keyboard. Could you say people come to you and say, well, which bit's you? Yeah. They, well, it's they, all you. They often think, because they, they see all the buttons and all the lights and everything, and they, 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 they just think it's all pre-recorded. And I say, well, why, why would I sit here and not play it for you? You know, because they, they just think it's technology and all oh, the guys Doing don't it all in your Yeah, there. so yeah, so with with electronic organs, you you set up all the settings and then you store them in what we call a panel memory. And so as you go along, you you, you go through a sequence of buttons. So, but it's, it's hours of work. It literally is because you you're not only not say thinking about how you're going to play the song, but you have to set all the sounds up and everything um so it's um whereas when you're playing a pipe organ you have to do it live on the fly um so it's uh, yeah but it, it, it's good fun it's it really is a lot of a uh, lot of um um creative opportunities there and you can get some you can get ideas literally as you're going through the creative process so and and uh, you've you've done uh, i think you've got lots of cds as it says it's six cds mm-hmm. you've done uh, so you teach uh, you've got you've written music books yep. so people mm-hmm. who want to learn can learn through you as well yeah the the, the, the piano books i've written are um, uh, piano pieces to play on the piano. Um, so um, um, last year I became a published composer. It was very exciting. So I've got a piano book series out called Pianistic, uh, which is three books t- um, of brand new pieces for the piano. Um, there's ten songs in each book, all different styles. We've got jazz, we've got Latin, we've got classical. And um, if anybody's interested in getting some some new music for the piano, visit my website, tomhorton.co.uk, and you can hear some uh, demo tracks on there and see some samples and, of course, order the books as well. It's just like a tuner day. I think it Absolutely. was. Absolutely, yes. Was that Tuna Day, days? Tuna a Dozen day. a Day, and yes, all the old <laughs> favourites still there. And I think you've, I mean, you've arranged exam music for all sorts. So you have worked with all sorts of people, haven't you? Yeah, it's 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 great because with with all musicians, you 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 have to have something that you rely on. So I've got I've got my as you say my sort of bread and butter work with teaching and and various things. But um, there's there's always something new coming along any ambitions anything any organ you haven't played that you would love to play and anything you'd really Um, dream there's quite a few out there probably the the Odeon Leicester Square one we talked about that's one Uh, a lot of people ask me have I ever played Blackpool Tower Um, never played the Tower World it's uh, um, Norwich Cathedral that would be a nice one to have a go on Um, but yeah I I just sincerely hope I, I can continue doing what I've always done um trying just to spread you know the word of you know we we don't just play in churches. We do lots of different there things as organists, yeah, and uh, keep teaching and um, and just hopefully keep doing what I've always done. Are there are there sort of organist competitions? Because I know you won one mm. as a youngster, didn't you? Yeah, I won the. It's a long time ago. Maybe that's uh, two thousand. I won that, which is kind of. <laughs> which was the uh, I won the uh, the UK Young Theatre Organist of the Year competition, and uh, two years ago I went back as a judge, uh, which was quite nice. But uh, yeah, there's uh, there's organ contests, just like there's there's you know the Leeds Piano Contest. There are organ competitions as well. But uh, but there's there's quite a lot of renewed interest. I, I teach at uh, Langley School up in uh, Norfolk, which is a private school, and we have a, a digital organ in the department, and we often get some of our piano students transferring onto the organ and once you get that spark there they're really interested in you know working with the feet and pressing the stops and uh and trying different things i'm not I'm you're, you're probably quite a rare breed though are you i guess there aren't that many of you doing what you do yeah you often find organists tend to specialize um so you you get pipe organ players who just play you know the classical stuff you get the the jazzy hammond style gospel stuff um but uh, there's not that many of us that sort of go across the spectrum um but uh yeah it, it, as i say it, you know one minute someone phones you up and says can you play for my wedding and you go to a lovely church and play a lovely pipe organ um in march i'm going up to the midlands to play for the cinema organ society on a lovely compton theater organ um back in when we get to may i'll be at the grange playing the the new word it's so there um friday this week i'll be at the cinema at southwell playing their virtual organ so uh, yeah so, it's, so you love it it's brilliant it really is to, to just remind us as well because we must find out more about it so i used to i used to love the mechanical music museum at cotton yeah. which closed mm. and and now so obviously a lot of the material there is going to be at the uh, the newly founded Grange Musical Collections. This is Palgrave. So tell us about Palgrave. Well, the first thing I'll say is it's a lot easier to find than cotton. <laughs> Which was in the middle of nowhere. Of absolutely nowhere. If you went there in the winter, it was like Ice Station Zedbury, it really was. But the, um, the curator is a, a great friend of mine, Jonathan Ling, who, again, like me, has grown up 
um, learning about organs and he's a wonderful person because he knows how to restore all these pipe organs and things and he has a wonderful collection of um, self-playing mechanical instruments. Like recently he was on um, Antiques Road Trip, okay. a recent episode. They okay. did a little tour around East Anglia and the local towns and uh, Natasha, one of the presenters, went to the Grange and listened to some of the things. So he's got um, music boxes, he's got barrel organs, he's got orchestrians and in the main building... He's going to have, um, I think, four or five organs. So there's got, there's this new word. So uh, we've got a four manual comp, and there's other organs to come. And uh, as I say, on on every Sunday from the first Sunday of the month, from the beginning of May to December, you can go for an open day and have a tour of the collection and hear the organs and everything played. And Fantastic. it's great because you get kids there. You get older folks there and because a lot of these kids they they haven't seen any of these things well before. they won't understand because a lot no. of it some of them are paper paper sort of paper rolls, rolls set it going, some are pin, pins on barrels yeah, pins yeah. On, yeah and the, the amazing thing is um, i mean some of the instruments he's got go back to you know the 1700s and you're hearing the same music it, it's it's musical history that we hear the same sound so that we sure. would have heard um because the music of that era we can't hear chopin playing chopin because it doesn't exist except in sheet music form, so we have no idea really how any of that music was supposed so to be played. So the timing of it, the loudness yeah. of all it's those just, things. We've just got the paper record. So um, all these mechanical instruments are living, working history. And, uh, you know, it's it, the people just find it absolutely fascinating. But it's, it's very easy to find on the net, just to search for the Grange Musical Connection. And I say that will be open on the first Sunday in May, which apparently I'm playing the first Sunday in May, and I, I will Ooh. be playing the, the new word at So hopefully folks will come and visit. We'll, we'll mention it nearer the time. I'm trying Definitely. to catch a word with uh, Jonathan as well. Uh, you've mentioned your website, so tomhorton.co.uk is the website. So if you want to find out lots more. Uh, Suffolk, you, you're, you're born and bred, you brought your American wife back to Suffolk, you're not planning on going anywhere else? Is Suffolk sort what? of in the blood? I was going to say, I was planning to go back to America. I say, don't do this to me. <laughs> no, no we're, we're very happily settled. I've, I've been in Halesworth now for the best part of 20 years. Uh, we have two children, um, Joshua and Abigail. Hello. Um, Abigail was three on Monday. Um, so, Happy birthday, Abigail. Yeah, so they're, they're running around. We've just started Joshua on the on the organ and the piano a oh, little really? bit. Yeah, he's six and a half, so he's uh, they enjoy music. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, it was just a lovely town. It's a great place to sort of work from. Um, lots of students come to my studio there for lessons. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a lovely lovely part of the world to live in. And hence the 29th of February, the cut in house with the uh, Buster Keaton silent film event where Tom is going to be playing the organ uh, to the, the piano. Sorry, Same difference. Playing the yeah. piano. Well, it's a keyboard <laughs> playing the piano to a Buster Keaton to one of those silent films, and I just think that's so clever as you t- as you play alongside, as yeah. he says, he slips on a banana or as a chase or whatever. <laughs> so that's the 29th of February, the cut in Halesworth. So just before we finish, then three confessions. Mm. Let me run through these and see which is the right one. I've played the organ for numerous weddings, including my own. No, almost though. Go on then. On the wedding day, because we got we got married in Chicago and um, on the wedding day it flooded and the organist um, actually didn't turn up um, so I nearly played my best man is also an organist um, but they had uh, for the previous wedding they had a, a classical guitarist playing so he said shall I do you want me to stay and play for your wedding so we had some lovely Spanish Guitar. serenade <laughs> coming down the aisle too so uh, that, quite, that, yeah quite tricky to be the one playing the organ and then run down and do the wedding bit as well I do yeah from the <laughs> distance as well uh, I halted a concert halfway through to propose to my now wife this sounds very romantic it I does guess. doesn't it it doesn't sound like me though so that's a no I'm oh, afraid no. <laughs> Never even thought about no, it. No, sadly not. No. So that means, means I've been married twice, but to the same woman is true. It's true. Yes. Oh, go on. I want to know more. Do you want Tell to know more? Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, as I said, my wife Jennifer, my lovely wife, is from Chicago, and in order to get her visa to move here, um, it was a lot, well, basically cheaper, to get married in America. So I flew over. Um, we went down to City Hall, got married in front of a judge in the robes, and. A couple of minutes later, we were man and wife. And then I came home for three months um, and then went back in July 2010 And because uh, my wife's Catholic, so we had the big church wedding. Um, so then we were married um, in the Catholic church um, once again. So I've been married twice, 
but to the same woman. You could have had a marriage here as well, look, and that could have been three times. We had a garden party. Did you? That was a lot more fun, yeah. <laughs> much more, that's much more Suffolk, isn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, yes. Fantastic. Thank you so much for coming in. It's been really Thank interesting. Thank you for having me. It's been great fun. And, and we'll talk to you again nearer the time. So uh, the Grange Musical Collection at Palgrave, which if you ever went to Cotton, you will know some of the uh, stuff that was there is going to be the, this new collection Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Thank you for coming in. It's Thank been you, Leslie. really, really interesting. So Tom Horton, my guest. Uh, TomHorton.co.uk if you want to find out more on the website and look out for him on YouTube as well.